Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Well, thanks for tuning in anyways. I really appreciate it. Um, and today we're gonna be looking at a video called um, Star Spangled Banner ads. You've never heard it before. And um, I decided to rewatch this and give some commentary and maybe explain why certain traditions in the military are the way that they are. Because when I was in, I was really confused. Like there was no history or um, as like it's spoken in this video, there was no history like this taught. Um, so um, no one really understood the significance of why we did certain things with, certain flag, with the flag. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> I like the beginning of the song. It kind of reminds me of like the opening of a patriotic movie. <laughs> there was a lawyer once. His name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of. You've seen it. It's in most hymnals throughout our churches. It's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game, we stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Can you believe that some people don't even know that the White House burned down before like twice I wonder what's going on in our education system to the point where people don't know this hmm. because of this conflict and the protractedness of it they had accumulated prisoners on both sides the American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners and the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats, and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight. You're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. Side note, at least back then, they knew the difference between men and women. They said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. 
and we'll know that they've surrendered and you'll now be under British rule. So I, I will say this, um, cause every morning, um, we had to be up. <laughs> I got up at five thirty so that I can make it to formation, um, by six when well, we had, yeah. So we had to be there by, um, formation by six, but the reveille, the, I don't know what it was called, the reveille, um, for the morning. And that was because the flag was raising. And I'm wondering if there's a correlation between why we got up so early to stand for the flag when there was the raising, you know, the colors, um, because of this whole story here, how, you know, you have to lower the flag. And if you lower your flag, that's a sign that you surrender. Um, but as long as it stood up, we will continue to bombard you with basically shells, mortar shells. So I'm wondering if that's the significance of why we stand for the rebel If you have any, um, if you have any, um, information, please leave a comment below. Um, I would like to hear your take and to learn more about history or at least, um, leave some sources there so I can look into it, you know, more. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed. He says the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The Admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said, he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. Uh, yes. You know, I was always defiant growing up didn't know where that spirit came from but I was really quiet into my books studying the computer reading history that's why I love timepieces especially when it comes to movies I love historical movies or at least their adaptations um, but yeah one thing that just so weird to me when I see other nations who talk crap about America is that a lot of them live under, you know, subservitude type conditions, in my opinion. Um, they don't know how to stand up to their government. And if, I think they have been bred that way for generations. They only know tyranny. They only know submission under a ruling thumb. Whereas in America, we've never, we didn't start our country off, you know, like that. Like, maybe not for some of us, <laughs> but the spirit, when you just think about the spirit of how it was, the spirit of America, of how it was erected, 
it was because of defiance. And I think that makes us stand apart from a lot of nations um, that have been built over the centuries. So let's continue. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott Key said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. God keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag, completely nondescript, in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground. Although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh say does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The debt was demanded, the price it was paid. So I will leave the rest of that down, uh, the rest of that video down in the description box for those who want to actually um, finish watching that. It's just the, I believe, just the song left. Um, I will say this: I never understood the importance of whenever you're, we were holding the flag in the military, or if you were like the flag bearer, why they would tell you to never let it touch the ground. You just there was no meaning behind it, um, or at least not, they didn't tell us. But when you look, we, I shouldn't say, when you look at, when you watch this video and hear what um, Francis Scott Key's, um, met, oh, well, his story was behind this, well, the story for why he wrote this song, it makes complete sense. Um, you, you never let the flag, it explains why you never let the flag when you're in the military touch the ground because it is a, a sign of defeat, it is a sign of surrender, and that was something that after countless bodies that basically sacrificed themselves, men sacrificing themselves to hold it up, it would be a disservice, it would be a dishonor to let that hit the ground even to, the, um, even to this day. So when I, I look at everyone who um, I had to look into individuals who held up this flag you've had 
mainly, you know, white men, but you also had a black man, the first black man ever to receive the Medal of Honor, actually, um, um, was one of the men that held this flag up when it was about to fall or decided to join in with the other men to keep it from falling. And he was rewarded with the Medal of Honor for his actions. Um, when I see people who kneel for the flag, especially now I've been learning all this stuff, um, it really, it really, I wouldn't say, yeah, it does affect me to the point where I feel like they are dishonoring everyone who came before them. Um, and if you even want to go towards the black community, when you have individuals who only look at our ancestors as a means to gain reparation, reparations, you know, money because of slavery, but yet they don't want to kneel, they don't want to stand for the flag. However, we've had ancestors that did you know, get their licks and wounds from holding this flag because they believed in independence. They believed in not being subservient to anyone. So it 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 just shows the um I don't I don't, I don't want to know what you, I don't know what you would want to call that, but whether it's cognitive dissonance or something, but it's very contradictory to use our in my opinion our ancestors as a means to gain money or to take money. Um, um, because of the pain and suffering with, that they went through, but you won't even stand for the flag for those who, you know, suffered injuries by holding it up and making sure we have America uh, free and independent. So the next time you want to kneel for the flag, especially if you're a person in my community, please remember all the people who came before you that made it so that you can live in a society that we have here instead of someplace other than here.